today's first question was from Elaine, and it is this. The pros seem to really know when a read is working for them or not. On my tenor, I understand that my 2.5 strength is softer than a 3. How can you uh, learn to feel and hear the difference between the reads? What's the lifespan of a read? Let me start with the uh, lifespan of the read. Now, that's going to depend on a whole bunch of factors. It's going to depend on, number one, how much you play. And I don't just mean per practice session, but do you practice every day? Do you do gigs and stuff like that? All these types of things. Um, how do you store your reads? That's huge for the lifespan of a read when you think about it. Um, I've got some videos on my website at DonnaSchwartzMusic.com. If you go to the free stuff tab, click under uh, Common Solutions Woodwind, you're going to see some videos there on how I store my reads. I will tell you that, and I'll tell you the two ways right now, but I will tell you that the way I store my cane reads, they last. And um, I didn't invent these ways. Um, Ricky Sweeham, an interview with him, I heard that helped me uh, with one of the ways. And I interviewed John Mackey from Read Juvenate. That's the other way that I store my reads. But I'm telling you, my reads last for months. Ricky Sweeham was saying in his interview he had a read that lasted him five years. Okay, five years. Um, did he play gigs on that read? No, but it was a practice read. But if you live in a dry climate, like I do, and uh, Ricky does in a dry climate with high altitude, you've got to think of ways to be able to get your reads to, number one, be instantly playable, but number two, to last longer. So the lifespan of a read, again, depends upon how much you play, uh, how you store them, all those types of things. So I store, I store my reads wet. I use the Read Juvenate system. Um, I actually was at a really awesome jam session last night, um, some real all-stars there, and um, that was a lot of fun, and one of my favorite places in Burbank, too, and a lot of great players. Um, so usually when I'm playing a gig or I'm going out, I usually bring the Rejuvenate. It's so convenient. Um, actually, give me a second. Let me pull it out. Here it is. Rejuvenate. Handy little strap if you need it. Magnetic sticks to um, whether it's music stands or I use an iPad with a mic stand. So it just clicks right on there. And this is great because what it does, uh, and actually I'm using one of the reads right now, but you could store three reads, three tenor reads. And then um, I think if you get the clarinet one, you could probably store four. Don't quote me on that though. You see the sponge in there? That sponge is soaked in original Listerine, not the colored ones, folks. They have sorbitol. Bacteria feeds on that. Um, so store my reads in here, and I got to tell you, they last a long time. You could keep some Listerine in here, or just soak the sponge, and then um, you know go from there and not have extra liquid. I tend to like it a little bit more wet. I pull out a reed, boom, easily, instantly playable, and I'm telling you, they last that way. Here's the other way. Let me pull this out. This I learned from Ricky Sweeham. Again, original Listerine. This is a waterproof Wits container. And with this, um, again, my reads last a really long time. I've got my tenor and my alto reads in here as well. If you want more info on that, go to my website, go to the free stuff tab, and you will find it. Let me get that out of my way. So that hopefully will help you in terms of expanding the, the life of your reads. The other thing too, and again, this is another video on my website, but uh, not something that I invented. It's something that I read in a, in a really great magazine. Um, Tracy Hevner, he's a, a professor in um, uh, a university, I think in Alabama. Um, he had written an article and he talked about how to revive a dead read. And it happens, you know, you get this really awesome read. You've been playing on it for a long time and you just want to prolong the life of it for as long as you can. Well. He was talking about a couple of ways in his article, and um, I also have some other ways that I add to that as well. I talk about that in my course that's going to be coming out very soon uh, called Get a Killer Saxophone Tone. I will put the link in the show notes below so you'll see that. But reviving dead reads can also expand the, uh, the life term of the read. Now you also asked, Elaine, the pros seem to really know when a read is working for them or not. Um, you mentioned you understand that your 2.5 is softer than the 3. Yes, it is. A softer read doesn't mean it's not going to last as long. A harder read doesn't mean it's going to last longer. Okay, It's how you take care of them. It's how you prepare them. 
all right? Not every reed in the box works for saxophone and for clarinet players, all right? Ask oboe players. They're constantly, you know, uh, fixing their reeds. So you also need to know, have a little bit of knowledge at least, how to adjust reeds. And two tools that I talk about all the time, let me grab them from my uh, handy dandy music stand tray here. I interviewed Tom Ridenour from ATG. Okay, this is the Ridenour system. And this is the one that was recommended. Uh, a whole bunch of my subscribers to my free weekly newsletter recommended this. So I said, oh, I never heard of that. I tried it. Man, this is awesome. This helps you adjust your reads. It's idiot proof. Even I can use it. <laughs> it really helps for, to uh, help your reads to get adjusted properly. The better adjusted your reads are, the longer that they're going to last. Okay, that's really crucial. So this is one great tool. Here's another awesome tool, and I also use this. This is the Reed Geek. I have the classic one. They have a new one out now that's black, and it's got a little bit more extra stuff to it. They even make this for double reads, folks. It's called the Double Geek. How cool is that? All right, so the Reed Geek, I use this to, um, I use this for the back of my read. Sometimes I use it for the front of the read. But there's a, an amazing amount of YouTube videos for both of these awesome products, okay, on YouTube. So definitely check that out. That will also prolong the life of your read, but it will also help you to be able to play your read. Because part of Elaine's question was, you know, how do you know when a read is working for you? Well, sometimes you may think it's too hard. But it may not be. It just may not be adjusted. And that's the, the first problem right out of the ballpark. Okay, so a little bit of knowledge about how to adjust reads will really help you. Now, those folks that use synthetics, uh, like when I was on the jam last night and um, Pat Sakari, who's a great player, I uh, was jamming with him. Uh, he had a, what was it? Uh, he had a Legere on, I think. I think it was Legere the synthetic, the Legere sin signature series. I used to play Legere's for the longest time, oh my gosh, like eight, nine years, um, on both my tenor and alto. Well, you never have to worry about, um, you know, those reeds like dying out on you right away. Those reeds will last months and months and months. And also, with Legere, they have a refund policy. If that reed, if you're finding it's not working for you, you know, right away, and it's just the wrong whatever, you could return it. You just pay for shipping, and they'll send you another one. That's pretty cool. Um, you could also adjust synthetic reeds as well. Now, another great reed that I'm using now uh, that's synthet synthetic is the fiber reed. I use the fiber reed hemp, and it's awesome. I use it on my alto all the time, and on occasion I'll use it also on my tenor. So that's another thing for you to think about. But keep in mind, with a bunch of the synthetic reeds, it's going to feel a little bit harder. You have to adjust to it. And also, not every synthetic reed works either. Okay, there's a greater, greater probability that they will work, but not every synthetic read works as well. Okay, so let me just see some comments here from folks. Hey, Alex. Hey, Cohen. Hey, Renee. Uh, let me see. Just trying to scroll down here. Uh, Cohen says, I store them dry. Tried to store them wet, but they seem to come softer. Okay, yeah, thank you for saying that. Over time, yeah, when you do store them wet, they do appear to be a little bit softer in strength. Absolutely. Thanks for bringing that out. Um, but for me, it's really, really super important to have an instantly playable read, without a doubt. Now, um, the thing, too, to keep in mind, you store them dry, they're going from a dry state to a wet state when you're playing dry, wet, dry, wet, dry, wet. You're wearing out the read quicker. Think about it. Okay, I'm just putting, putting some food for thought, some food read stuff for thought, okay? So just keep that in mind. Uh, Renee, uh, no, Alex is saying my Legere is working great. Um, yeah, like I said, Legere, Fiber Read, great brands. Um, you know, I know from my own personal experience, I've tried a whole bunch of others. When I first started um, playing gigs, playing shows, I used the Barry, the Barry synthetic reads. Um, those are really hard feeling reads, and um, I can't believe I played on those, but I did. I played on them for a while, me and my mentor at the time. Uh, but I don't, I don't use those anymore. Everybody has the, what they like, the feel for what they like. You know, that's perfectly awesome to do. Um, Renee writes, if the wood not working, the Legere works always. Yeah, the cane, actually. That's, uh, that's pretty true. And like I said before, for the Legere's, 
if you look, when you open up that package with the read, if you um, go to like the little insert in there, they talk about how if it, the read is not working for you after you tried it, you can return it. Okay, so I've done that. I actually had to do that in the eight or nine years twice. That's pretty good, right? Um, so it's pretty cool when you think about it. But like I mentioned, with great tools like the ATG system, and again, I've got an article on my site with an interview with Tom, all that kind of stuff. You can learn all about it. Just check out my website. Um, go to the blog and search. Um, and with ReadGeek, you know, you can really um, have great responding reads and reads that will last a long time. Hey, by the way, um, I interviewed Moro from ReadGeek. He's going to be on my radio show, and that's going to be coming out very soon. In fact, probably next week. So, and oh, and there's a special, there's a special discount. See, so if you subscribe to my newsletter, you're going to get a special discount to the ReadGeek products. So just keep that in mind, folks. Okay, a couple of more, um, couple of more comments here. Um, Renee, you said Baraton hurts my lips. Do you mean the Barry reads? Just uh, respond to that. I'm not sure. Cohen says, I hear some say a read can get water water logged, probably. I think that's what you mean. Yeah, you know, you know what's interesting? When you look at, let's pull this out. When you look at reads that are stored in like this thing, let me pull out one of my older reads. Okay, this, yeah, okay, so this, you can kind of see, kind of looks waterlogged. Actually, you know, honestly, for me, for me personally, and I know people will probably uh, disagree, um, you could probably say this is waterlogged, but this read plays great or it's, it wouldn't be in my case, okay? Um, I pull it out, I don't have to wet the thing. I never forget when I first moved out here to California and um, I was checking out some bands and I remember it was down in South Orange County. This guy was a really good player, but I'm watching him, he's soaking his read for literally a half an hour before the gig. And I'm thinking, oh my God, that's crazy. And what if what if it just so happens? Yeah, that may have been a good read, but what if he had to switch reads in the middle of a gig? <laughs> you know, that's another thought too, folks. Um, I double, I play tenor and alto. I used to do it a lot more, especially in New York. And that's why for me, I had the synthetic reads because I was on a stage and I played like five songs on tenor, one on alto, five songs on tenor, two on alto, and I had to make sure the reads were ready to respond. So synthetics are great for that, but also when you store them this way, it also helps for that too. So just to give you a little bit of, um, you know, a heads up or whatever, for those of you that double, it's a great way to store your reads. And, you know, the Rejuvenate, even though you can only put three reads in here, I'm telling you, it's really awesome and it's very, very convenient. It's, it's really, um, when I travel, I use this because I don't, I don't put any liquid in when I travel. I have to have the liquid in for the other container and that makes it a little harder. So this is great for traveling too. Okay, so if your reads are not adjusted, it makes it harder to play. It has nothing to do with the strength. Now, let's say the read strength is too strong. How do you know? Well, you're sitting there, you're trying to produce your nice sounds and you feel like you're working way too hard. You feel like you're going to start to bite, lead with your teeth, in order to get a sound to come out. That strength may not be right for you. Now, if you talk to, you know, many professional players, they're gonna use a variety of reed strengths. Some will use three, three and a halfs and fours with a large tip opening. Uh, some folks will use a very, you know, large tip opening with a softer strength, like a two, two and a half. Majority of people that I've spoken to use two and a halfs, um, sometimes threes with the larger tip openings. Um, if you look at how Jerry Albright plays, if you look at his setup, he uses a one and a quarter legere. Okay, um, I don't remember the tip opening of his mouthpiece, but that's what he uses. Now you can't argue about his sound. <laughs> so everybody's different. You have to find what works for you. But if you're resorting to bad habits just to produce tones that you normally can, um, or you find that you're biting, Chances are that's probably not the right strength read for you, but also please keep in mind your read may need adjusting.